Let's talk about variability. We've talked about measures of center and they're extremely important. Most of our hypotheses in science are about measures of center. They're about means. So we measure something multiple times and we say the average of this should be whatever. Um, or we're interested in a characteristic in a population in the behavioral sciences and we say the mean something or other of people, the mean amount of authoritarianism or something like that should be such and such in the population. But the variability is just as important and according to some people far more important than um, than the centers. So uh, you can't test hypotheses about centers unless you consider variability very carefully and in fact variability can test hypotheses about centers but we'll get in that in, into that later. So learning objectives, you need to learn how to calculate right now and interpret measures of spread. Variability is sometimes called spread. They're, they're synonyms for each other. And the first one we'll talk about is the range, which is very easy, but later we'll talk about the interquartile range, the IQR, and the variance and the standard deviation, which are basically the same thing. So why do we measure variability? Let's look at some students' test, test scores. Let's imagine that these students, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, there's ten students, and they have test scores going from one to nineteen on some test. These two things are not the same. This is a different class of ten students, but their means are the same. So in addition to a mean, you need variability to describe what's going on in a data set. There are other reasons why we, why we measure variability as well, as I mentioned, but this is the basic first one, that you just can't describe what's happening in a data set unless you are using uh, variability as one of the things that is helping you describe it. So you, if you describe the mean and, well, the center and the spread together in a data set, you've gone a long way towards really understand what's going on in that data. So variability is just how spread out your data are. If you uh, drop a glob of jam on a plate and it stays in a glob, there's not much variability. If you take but a, a knife and spread it with a butter knife all over the plate, now there's a lot of variability, even though the amount of jam didn't necessarily change. So more spread out data usually indicates some kind of diversity or uh, some kind of different process or situation leading to whatever's happening in your data. Than, very, than data that is less spread out. One of the things that we're very concerned about with variability is that when data is very spread out, it might be influenced by unknown factors. Pretty much everything we measure in the behavioral sciences is influenced by a lot of very, what we call noisy um, things. So it, it's a noisy variable. Anything you measure is noisy. So imagine that you're measuring something like intelligence. Well, intelligence isn't one thing. Intelligence is just a word we have for a whole bunch of things that tend to go together. So you've got all these different abilities, all these different characteristics. When you measure them, you measure a whole bunch of different things and then you take averages of all those different measurements and that ha that's how you measure intelligence. So there's a lot of variability. When a person's IQ is measured, that's the average of a bunch of things, but there's a lot of variability. And when a group of people's IQ is reported, there's always a lot of variability in that group as well because there are many things that we call error variants. Now, it doesn't mean something went wrong when we say error. It just means we can't explain it or noise. So just like real noise, if you knew what was causing the noise, like on a radio signal, well, it wouldn't be noise anymore. Then it would be something interesting to study. Same thing here. And I'm not quite sure why I'm not going. There we go. Yeah. Changing slides. So right now, variability is useful because it's an extremely important descriptive statistic of samples. Because knowing the center isn't enough. Later, variability will be important because it's a key component in what we're calling inferential statistics. Inferential statistics are when you make inferences about the population based on what's in the sample. And so if the centers of two groups are different, then the amount of variability around those two centers really matters a lot in your in your attempt to try and guess uh, what populations those two groups came from and what the center is in the population. So making that leap from predicting population values from your sample value, uh, that's a really important leap and it requires a really sophisticated understanding of variability. We have to estimate and account for variability. So this is why statistics is sometimes called the study of variability. So 
the range is this Neanderthal statistic, it's or Neanderthal statistic. It is really easy and it's really clunky and it isn't terribly useful, but it can be useful on a really basic level if you've got nothing else. It's just the largest value minus the smallest value. Notice that says largest minus smallest, so you can't use this with purely unordered categorical or nominal data. You can use it with um, ordered data though, so ordinal data you can say what the range is. So it's just the largest value minus the smallest value. Now note that the range is a difference. Some type people will say the range was 10 to 35, but in an extremely technical sense, the range would be 25 there. The range is the difference between the largest and smallest. It's not the values themselves. But you'll see it reported as the values themselves sometimes. It, it's not necessarily wrong. It's just that technically in statistics, it's defined as the difference. So if you want to be super right, always do that. So here's some examples. Here's some numbers. What's the range? Well, you take the largest minus the smallest, and the difference is 1.7 millimeters. So there's that range. Here's some other numbers. I have no idea what scale they might be on. You take the largest minus the smallest, and now you've got 691.75. So look at this last example. You've got something in the 600s, something in the 200s, another 200s, you've got an 80, and then you've got a 1, something that's less than 2. So the range is really volatile. The range jumps around very easily. All you have to do is add or remove one observation sometimes, and the range changes radically. So the size of the, of the range is influenced by only two values in the data, the biggest and the smallest. That's not good. Um, we don't like the range because of that. The, the range is really not useful for almost any situation. There, there are far better things to look at. However, if you're doing stuff on the back of an envelope in a restaurant with your best friend and you don't have a calculator, the range is a really reasonable way to get a really, really rough idea of some things. And in some data sets, it, it stays kind of stable. But we don't use it much. So the range is not our huckleberry.